let's do this. And I like this song so much, I'm gonna play it again. Hello, that's my jam and password on NBC. Here he is, my friend, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy, go for it. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Me, Johnny Ray. And the greatest driver. Glenn, he's driving. They're the best. I love them. Even though it owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. All right, safety rules, folks. First, if you need guest assistance, have a medical emergency. If you drop something of value off of the side of the tram or have sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red emergency cord, which is located above your head. So runs out in the middle of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be very happy to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please remain seated with your arms and legs inside the vehicle. The studio is private property. So if at any time you drop your phone, just get wait to use the restroom. Pull that cord. Please to remain seated. No smoking, no vaping of any kind. Be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, fire effects, sudden trap movements, and many water effects. Now, of course, you do want to have the cameras out for great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. And finally, for your safety, those around you, please not use selfie sticks while on the All right, so, for those of you here for the first time, that's Fire Station 51 on your right. I'd love to point it out. It's a real fire station. It's not a set. It's not fake. That's there. That's the real deal, all right? We're professionals that are on call every single day. They're on call 24-7. We have our own fire department. We have our own police department. Bank, post office, zip code. This is Universal City in L.A. County. Now, we're busier now than we have ever been and are undergoing an immense expansion here in the studio because of the high demand for film and television production here in L.A. You can see some of that expansion happening on your left as we arrive to the front lot, which houses administrative offices, sound and editing facilities, and a majority of our 36 sound stages. So, welcome to Universal Studios, folks. <laughs> welcome to Hollywood. stages off to the left. This is how we film seats indoors inside. Now, on the outside, they may look like airplane hangers, but inside, we can create any environment the story demands. And like I said earlier, we have 36 sound stages, all different sizes, shapes. These doors, they're big. They're called elephant doors. Why? When the studio first opened, we had a zoo. There was a zoo here. And those doors are big enough for an elephant to pass through. So they're called elephant doors. Stages 8 and 7 here to the left, and you'll see sound stage 14 once we turn the corner. Our three sound stages used for the television show Bel Air, which is streamed on Peacock. Our Bel Air stars Jabari Banks and Holly Shotton. Take a look. Can you just grab me water when you pour some as you put egg on, on the cheese? You put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese, and it's fine. Whoa, how many seats do you think are in there? I don't know, it's gotta be a lot. Man, we could probably fit the whole Bel Air cast and crew in there. You know, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yo, lucky for y'all, the Banks family mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know what? I love the four-year set where Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, oh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here, too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, 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 and that was really fun. I said you feel my toes. <laughs> no, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew who put it all together from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Transpo, yes. You know, Transpo is the best. Yeah, they have the sweetest rides for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're going to get a ride like this, we'd better...
better go talk to transport now and let these people get back on their tour. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I've got the keys. Oh, not fun. Step on, oh, man. All right, that there. We're streamers selling Peacock. Universal has them alone. Here's your freaking with television. Here are some shows you may have heard of or might have even seen. Ted, the bear, who now has his own television series streaming on Peacock. Hi everyone, Seth McFarland here, and I'm excited to share with you a behind-the-scenes look at my Peacock original event series, Ted. It's a prequel series set in 1993, and that means our skilled craftspeople had to build a high school, a house, and even recreate downtown Boston as it looked back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the tour. But I should warn you, Ted is intended for mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Oh, come on! Ted. I started watching it the other day, and five minutes in, yep, it's not for kids. No. <laughs> but it's funny, it's funny, it's funny, it's funny. These bungalows feel that town's production offices to some of the top writers, producers, directors, and all of Hollywood. This is where the magic starts. Now, deals are made, projects are greenlit, meetings are held. These bungalows were briefly used during the 1950s and 60s as dressing rooms to iconic stars such as Doris Day, James Stewart, Rock Hudson, Lucille Ball. In this area, you'll see Bungalow 5195 has the white awning over the door. Those are the Dalarenti's company offices. But look at the profile on the wall. That was once the office to the great master of suspense director, Albert Hitchcock. Here we have Soundstage 25, where the sitcom Lopez vs. Lopez is filmed, sorry, George Lopez and Maya Lopez. You can see some parking spaces here reserved for cast and crew. We all go a little mad Actually, there are two sound stages behind this building, 25 and 26. We used to call them the Will and Grace sound stages because uh, Will and Grace filmed the last few seasons here and they inaugurated those two sound stages. And now we move into the back lot where the world is literally just around the corner. This is where we shoot a lot of the big stuff, big scenes on a massive scale. The buildings that you're about to see off to your right, they're called facades. They're just the front and sides of buildings. We construct what the camera's going to see. Your imagination, without even realizing it, builds in the rest of the structure. What well, looks like brick and stone, in reality, is wood, foam rubber, fiberglass, chicken wire, plaster of Paris, very lightweight materials, right? So first stop, Brownstone Street. I want you to take a look at this clip I'm going to play, and take a look at the buildings off to your left. The scene from Bruce Almighty was filmed here. Raise the door! I'm in the shower! Ah. how Jim Carrey places a dog on grass and leans against a tree. There's no grass. There were no trees. Those are props. Yep, yep. Trees go overnight here in the Universal Back Lab. Yeah, we do that really easy. And if a leaf falls off, staple it back on. All right, next up, Courthouse Square, better known as Hill Valley for the Back to the Future film starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Turn in the corner, the famous clock towers on the other side of the park. That's where Doc Emmett Brown harnessed the bolt of lightning that sent Marty McFly back into the future in the first film. It was actually the back lot of Courthouse Square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had the scenes up at the clock tower, all that lead. Lead fell out I was standing inside looking at the ledge and I already had the vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> now, my friends, we reuse these 
sets over and over and over again, again and again and again, but we change their appearance constantly. That's why you don't recognize them from one production to the next. Will and Grace, Ghost Whisper, music videos, uh, let's see what was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Quantum Leap, Bill's here, American Ninja Warrior. Take, I don't know if you can see this, but as uh, we're going to go into my side of town, New York, because I'm from New York originally. But you see at the end of the street, that building, that RNG building, that's a painting. That's a bureau at the end of the street. Painted and technically called Trump Loyal. Trump Loyal. See that? It looks real, doesn't it? Look at that. But that's a painting at the end of the street. And here we are, New York. Here's Jimmy Fallon to show you how we bring it to life. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. Dude, there's a painting in my old neighborhood. What's well, got mugged over there? An old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool, guys. <laughs> I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. And that painting that I pointed out on the other side of the street, I'm going to stop the, 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 the clip right here. You see the building in the middle? That's that painting. And it looks like a real building, right? Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. These facades are a little over 50 feet tall and have steel infrastructures. And speaking of big and tall, here's King Kong director, Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. And I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the adventure. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island. And it's great to have you along for the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. All right, my friends, please secure your personal belongings, your wallets, cell phones, backpacks, purses, toys, purchases, anything that may fall overboard, especially if you're sitting next to the train gates. You don't want to lose anything in here because if you do, you may not get it back. So don't mess up your day so early in the morning. Do remain seated and welcome to Skull Island.
projects out of one of the world's largest digital 3D screens, standing over 40 feet tall, 180 feet long, and utilizes some of the most advanced technology in filmmaking today. The film was designed by Peter Jackson and his team in Mighty Digital. Filmmakers in Widow won quite a few Academy Awards. They've worked on films such as King Kong, The Lord of Rings trilogy, Avatar, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, The Hobbit trilogy, Avengers, Infinity War, Endgame, and more. Hang on to those 3D glasses for you, uh, maybe using them again. With a Project Rex studio tour, the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions. There's creatures coming at them. They're seeing Kong from this side and T-Rexes from the other side. Working on a movie, we always know where the people are looking. They're looking straight ahead. They're looking at the shot that we're working on. Here you have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this ride, unlike the movies that we're used to working on, there's no cuts because it's one giant shot. This tram driving along through Skull Island is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience, it's a hell of a ride. And there's the director Peter Jackson in the car that got ripped off by a hungry T-Rex. Now, a tram became part of the action, part of the movie. And vehicles that you see in movies, TV shows, commercials, or music videos, they call them picture cars here in the industry. And guess what, folks? We're in luck. We're going to check out some picture cars that I'm sure you're going to recognize, because many of these have become just as famous as some of the stars who have driven them. as movie audiences embrace the need for speed, adding a great vehicle can make or break a big Hollywood event film. Holds especially true for more viral movies, such as Fast and Furious, one of Universal Studios' most successful movie franchises ever. Universal has quite a few very successful movie franchises. Here's another. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Folks, here are some set pieces of vehicles used in the first three Jurassic movies. Mobile Lab from the second film, The Lost World Jurassic Park. They dangled the curiously up the cliff in one of the film's most memorable scenes. In reality, it was suspended by a crane on top of one of our parking structures. I wanted to show you some dinosaurs, but uh, these cages are empty. I don't know what's going on here. Wait, oh, 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 that's gone. They're loose! Dinosaurs are around because they love making Jurassic movies. Yeah. Well, the play is a very important role in movie making, so in just a few, we're going to show you how we make it rain in a scene. And uh, I know the perfect spot for that, so uh, let's get to it.
this area. Oh, this area is always very active. Yeah, it's, well, it's always ready for a storm. Yeah, hear the thunder, some flashes of lightning. There's the rain. And we make it rain by using an overhead sprinkler system, which is kept out of the camera's view. Water shoots up into the air, so it can fall back down naturally, like real rain. Add a wind machine, and uh, you've got a storm. Now, folks, we only know what happens in Southern California. There's other places where it rains a little bit too much. You get mudslides and uh, flash floods. Thousands of gallons of recycled water released from large tanks located at the top of the hill. Here's a scene from the movie Big Fat Liar, which was shot right there. You can't outrun the wolf, kid! Yeah, we'll see about that. Amanda Bynes, Frankie Beauty, Paul Giamatti, Big Fat Liar. We leave old Mexico to now take you into the Wild West. Six points, one of the oldest sets on the Universal Live. I'm here to swear John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart shot a few of their westerns. That's right. That's where I aim to shoot you. Looks like we got ourselves a Mexican standoff. Lucky shot. Now what say you mount up and get out of town while the getting's good? All right. Well, I'll see you again, Fallon. Oh, you can count on it, Fallon. Hollywood movie magic right before your eyes. All right, so we leave the area. We have a beautiful lake behind me in front of you. Sound stages on the other side of that. To the far left, we have sound stage 34. And then sound stages 30, 31, 32, 33. The first three sound stages, 34, 30, and 31, are used for the singing competition show The Voice. That's where it's filmed. Season 24 was filmed there. Season 25 is now being filmed there. So, uh, yeah, that's what we do. It. This is The Voice. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the one. That's the one. All right. And that lake here has been there for a very long time since the studio opened. But here's a movie that you may have heard of. The only clip I have for that lake. The creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, this movie is 70 years old. Yeah. Now, folks, uh, we're approximately at the halfway mark of the studio tour. So once again, in case of an emergency, you have the red emergency cord above your heads. But please do remain seated. And now we're going to visit my favorite spot of the whole back lot, the area that we call Little Europe. We can make this area look like any European country you want, but I'll explain later no, why it's my favorite. Right now, see the sign on the right that reads, Welcome to the Good Place. These are some of the outdoor sets for the TV show. The Good Place. You, Eleanor Shellstra, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I've never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Maybe it's not all that bad. Huh, how can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Sorry, Ted Danson, Kristen Bell. Yeah, streaming on Peacock. Now, why is this my favorite spot? Well, I'm a fan of the classic Universal monster movies. Those black and white films from the 1930s and 1940s. Dracula, the Wolfman, the 
Frankenstein monster, the mummy. Yeah. This has been transformed into Transylvania, England, Spain, France, Germany, Switzerland. You name it. Really, really cool. We're coming up to an area that's called the Court of Miracles. Now, if you saw the 1941 film The Wolfman, starring Lon Chaney Jr., this area looks the same as it did back in the 1941 film. It's missing a floor on one side, but that's it. It's the same. The, the, the place is the same. It hasn't changed. I've taken pictures of this. I've taken pictures of the screenshot of the movie itself, and it's like... I know exactly where this is. It's so obvious. Really, really cool. Listen to what some famous directors have to say about the classic Universal monster films. When we think of Universal, we think of monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Bride of Frankenstein, the Mummy, the Hunchback of Dr. Jane, the Invisible Man, Phantom of the Opera. Classic films are just brilliantly made. Frankenstein image, flathead, bulbs. It's one of the great icons of the world. That to me was like the essence of the universal horror film. I was just mesmerized by his movie. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney. I remember the original Universal Studios Mummy movie really scaring me. They still ring in our memories now, and we love them. We love them. Everybody loves them. All right. Now, folks, are traveling through the oldest street of the Universal backlot. I know it doesn't look like much, but this is called Denver Street, and in its heyday, this was the place where Westerns were filmed, another of the places, right? We had six points at this area. There were facades on both sides, all inspired by the West, by the Western, you know? So uh, this is what it looked like back then. The man in the yellow handkerchief is Kirk Douglas, and the man with the blue handkerchief, that's the Duke John Wayne, all right? So we move from the west, from the wild west, to the east. Let's go to the east coast. Let's uh, visit uh, a nice fishing village, a small New England town off the coast of Maine. A peaceful town, a nice town, a little town called Amity, in a big, big movie called Jaws. George is in trouble. as well as off. You can see him swimming backwards. Backstroke. He hardly worked at all on the set of Jaws. He was constantly breaking down. 
Here to talk about the troubles of working with a mechanical shark like this one is Jaws director Steven Spielberg. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough. For a while there, I had the biggest hit all time. So I really owe the shark a lot. This is the Miss Mona's Chicken Ranch, which is the house on your right. Now that's a practical set. It's not a facade. You can film inside that house. Indoors, outdoors. There is a facade right behind it. You see the difference between the two? Jail is what I do. All right, they're working on the facades. Okay, so we're going to visit my favorite neighborhood now. This is called Colonial Street. If you saw the movie Candy Cane Lane on Amazon Prime with Eddie Murphy and Tracy Ellis Ross, a holiday movie. Uh, yeah, this was completely decorated with holiday ornaments and lights and stuff. It was really, really cool. That's where the family lived on. If you've watched uh, on Netflix, Never Have I Ever, uh, a show created written by Mindy Kalin, starring Maitreyi Ramakrishnan, who plays Davy on the show. Davy lives in this yellow house here to the left, okay? Now, I did mention earlier that we reused these sets again and again and again and again. That same house a few years ago is where Susan Meyer lived, played by Terry Hatcher, on ABC's Desperate Housewives. This was known as Wisteria Lane. If there is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate, it's a good name. So Wisteria Lane, Candy Cane Lane, and, well, and the actual name of the street is Colonial Street. Colonial Street's newest resident is actually Ted. Yeah. Yeah, there's the house. This is the last house on the left. Not the horror film. This one here. Last house on the left. The blue one with the three, uh... Yeah, really cool. <laughs> Nice. All right, now that you saw the house, let's uh, take a look at a seat. Let the festivities begin. How many we got? Well, let's see, we got 20 cartons. Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? Oh, come on, Johnny, we're doing a public service here. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. We're Samaritans. Yes, on Peacock. Here are some other productions that have filmed on this very same street. <laughs> directors such as Alfred Hitchcock, Steven Spielberg, and now with also Academy Award winner, writer-director Jordan Peele. We're going to visit Jupiter's Claim, which is a set from Jordan Peele's latest film called Nope, which stars Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, and Steven Young. What's up, Studio Tour? I'm Kiki Palmer from Jordan Peele's film Nope. What's a bad miracle? Well, you'll have to see our movie to answer that one. Until then, I hope you enjoy your visit to Jupiter's Claim. Did you see a UFO in that cloud? Yeah. No. I ain't never seen yeah. nothing like this. And here to talk about the 
set is director Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's claim. A nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kids Share. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Well, I do. A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of a gold rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the beautiful hot spot. It's a bad miracle. on the tram and there's a criminal called Owen Shaw after you so we're gonna hide you and everybody else with you in here inside this very well-known street racer party hangout for those of you here for the first time you don't need to put on the 3d glasses hold on don't put them on yet hold on I'll let you know exactly when the time comes when to do so all right let's see what's happening in here Roman Pierce, pleased to meet you. My buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you with Shaw for a while, so we brought you in our secret spot. All right, look guys, we're gonna keep Shaw from finding you, but to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here, so put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone can give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in there. Oh, we've been invited to the party! Yes! Escort this novice out. 
Let's go, Cookie Puss. You got an ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm in the middle of the You see what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Sean Trace does. Hops can't hold it forever. Letty, Roman, we're up. Driver, move that vehicle. You got it. It's about to get real interesting. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. to put on those special glasses. Put them on now. Do remain seated and uh, remember, no flash. Because there, you can find out how you can upgrade today's ticket into an annual pass and come back again and again and again. Make sure you download it to the Universal Studios Hollywood app. That way you can confirm that the park closes tonight at 9 p.m. See show ties for Waterworld, check wait ties for rides and attractions, and get details on how to visit Super Nintendo World. If you haven't done so already. On behalf of my driver, Glenn, myself, and everyone here at NBC Universal, we really hope you've enjoyed your exclusive behind-the-scenes Hollywood experience. Please make sure you have your personal belongings with you before you exit. Watch your step as you do so. And enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of L.A. And as 
They say here in Hollywood, when finished after a big, big production, that's a wrap. We'll see you all in the movies. Bye, everybody. Bye.